oh shoot, I went through all that and then I didn't grab my laptop like a doofus. All right. I got cookies though. All right. Kristen got cookies. It's now an hour long session of sitting on the computer on the phones next to each other on the couch. Depends on what your source is, right? <laughs> Conversation to call to order the finance school board finance committee meeting February twenty fourth. Um, we actually have a couple agenda items, but we can add. I have a couple to talk through at the end. So just going to get an update from Kate on the budget process. Um, just do a quick debrief on the joint workshop. Um, and then we have a, I can give you guys an update on one that's going to be on the town council agenda. Cool. Um, and that was really, and then I, I know April had sort of a other business question around TIF districts, Kate, which I had sent to you in advance. Yeah, uh, and I, I was trying to sort of ponder what that, what the question really is. And I did sort of go and do a smidge of research, but I don't, you know, I'll wait until we talk about what the question sure. is and see if I have any useful information sure. to share. Can go somewhere. And the only other thing I wanted to talk through, if we have time, is just go through our calendar. Mm -hmm. um, because the meeting dates that we had originally booked in were based off of like the calendar that we had proposed, not right. what it currently is. So we just need to see if we need to adjust any of those. Well, and I, yeah, I had a, a little bit of a wonder talking with Kelly this morning. She said she was able to get us chambers for... This is the big workshop, the two-day workshop. Yep. She able to get us chambers for the first day, but she was having a heck of a time with the second day, oh. the evening one, which is March 25th, which is a Wednesday, I think. And yeah. at the moment, she has us booked, and she was going to reach out to you, Sarah, too, um, uh, at the study center at the high school, which is a lovely space. It's kind of, you know, not the super publicist space, if that's a word. Um, you can certainly we can certainly get people into that room if we need to. Can but we I, accommodate the size of group that we are expecting, though? Um, this room was pretty full last year, if I remember. Yeah. For the budget workshop, yeah, yeah it it should be able yeah. to. Yeah, it's. A, I don't know if you've ever been in that room. It's laid out with tables and chairs around so that the kids can use it, but you can actually create a pretty decent size. Okay. Um, workshop table situation like this. It's obviously, it's not ideal, and Kelly's still sort of trying to figure stuff out. Okay. Um, but that was something that she and I just talked about today that I wasn't aware of until just now. Um, okay. Cool. Well, let's 
do that schedule at the end. Uh, do you want to just give us a budget process update? All right. So um, I know you folks have had a look at the little items on the Leadership Council's calendar, what we've been up to. Um, where we are at right now is we've been through the individual building and department meetings, the sort of one-on-one -on -one meetings. Uh, those happen between January 21st and 31st, a couple of weeks there. Um, each meeting runs a couple of hours, and um, it, was, it was a little different this year. It was kind of cool. We had uh, both Sandy and Diane at the table. Um, and both of them being new, the rest of our central office leadership team committed to do some tag teaming and be in the room with us as well and bring it, you know, their own perspective. Um, Allison was really helpful. I think, you know, we had some really good conversations with her being there with the other building leaders. Um, Monique is generally always there with me because she has that K-12, mm -hmm. what's going on with curriculum kind of perspective. Um, you know, making sure that people are budgeting sufficient funds for the programming that she knows is going to be out there. Um, Dawn was in on quite a few of the conversations mm -hmm. the, from the IT department, and it was just, it. Um, I mean, I'll let Diane say whether she thought it was productive. I felt like it was, we had some really good conversations, and yeah, people were really I think really it was very productive. You know, organized. I think it also demonstrated how, you know, whether it be a building or department, you know, everyone had really taken into account um, the scope of what they were responsible for and trying to, you know, determine what are the next best steps and, you know, what their needs were. So, you know, yeah. and, and again, I think you'll see that when we present that, you know, there are certainly some needs that we have identified that we're realistic about knowing that we're not going to be able to address it in this particular budget cycle. That being said, I think it's still really important that we put all those things out there, yeah. right? Yeah, and that, that leads to the next piece of, of um, what we've been working on, which is the investment proposals. And I did a bad job of grabbing things to come down here, but um, you'll remember that last year we came up with a graphic that was, that here's the budget from FY20, here's the budget the level services right. budget from FY21. Here's what it would look like when we take into account people that might be retiring or positions that we might not be filling at the same level. And then from there, going into what are the things that we need to add. Mm -hmm. And the ads, last year we had um, sort of requirements mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. in sort of a pink box and it was about mostly about special services mm -hmm. programming um, where we needed to add funding into the budget to accommodate kids coming in with IEPs and you know some of the services that would need to be provided in the year we're in now um, that were more than what we already had in place. Um, this year I'm looking at doing it with two pink boxes, if you will. One pink <laughs> box is the special services, compliance, regulated, we have to do this stuff. And then the second box, um, I'm envisioning being around enrollment and growth. Because again, you can't really say responsibly, you know, here come all the kindergartners and we're not going to necessarily add any teachers to mm -hmm. um, to keep our class sizes where we would like them to be. Um, whether our focus is on instruction and, you know, efficiency and quality of instruction or on student safety or on, you know, keeping our teachers from going off a cliff or any of those really good reasons. Um, I'm seeing that as a sort of a pink thing as well, as like, we really need to do this, we really need to do this. And then under that, we'll have one, two, three, four, five, here are the things that we would like to add in. Um, and depending on where that takes us in terms of our tax ask mm -hmm. um, for the town, then you know how, where do we draw that line that says, well, this is what our budget proposal is going to look like. So we've spent actually a couple of weeks on that back and forth between the leadership team and the Colton team, central office leadership team. Um, and we've got a draft of that that we'll be sharing with leadership team again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, of the template or of like the actual notes? Of in the how things are um, ordered or prioritized. 
uh, we've so got placeholder amounts in there. Yes, oh, exactly. Okay, cool. Exactly. Um, so then the missing piece is, well, how do we know what we can afford? And in this little parallel track that I'm on right now, I'm finishing up the level services budget. Okay. Um, optimistically, I'd like to say I would have that done by the end of this week. I'm always very optimistic. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, my goal is by the next leadership team meeting, which will be a week from tomorrow, to be able to say, here's, here's what level services look like. Um, we've been, like, like we said, through all of the department meetings, mm -hmm. and we've got all the feedback from everybody, but there's a few open pieces, some central office stuff that I'm working on and some mm -hmm. um, stipend calculations that I'm working yeah. on. Um, spent a lot of time in facilities this past weekend. It was very exciting. And uh, <laughs> um, actually, I, I, I say that, you know, in a silly way, but it, it was actually really cool because I was finding that we were doing really well on some of the energy costs um, that I hadn't really anticipated um, seeing savings in this year. And then looking forward, we just signed two contracts, one for um, natural gas the commodity natural gas and the other for fuel oil and both of them are reduced prices okay. um, for starting next with next school year um, one starts right in July and the other one starts in November which is the beginning of the heating season so it's a good thing you left those in before today yeah exactly um, um, we're, and uh, yeah and thank you um, Why can't I think of their name? The energy people who are going to help us find competitive energy, yes. competitive energy services are the ones that helped us figure out when to lock in. And That's great. Like, they're awesome. Super, super awesome. Okay, just one thing I want to uh, confirm with you, just on how you're talking about laying out the investment proposal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think I interpret it correctly when you said that you would include growth and enrollment numbers in the required bucket. Is yeah, and, and, I, and I think we'll talk about labeling, right? Okay. Because, I mean, it, you could say it's required. Well, it's not really required. You can have a class size that's higher than yeah. what you would prefer. Um, I'm, I'm seeing it as two separate things. One is, like, you got to do this because the law mm -hmm. says so. Yeah. And then the other is, we really want to do this because this is best practice and, and this is okay. our policy. So we did talk about that quite a bit last year. Yep. Like, what do you yeah. mean when you say something's required? Yeah, right. And right. I think we just need to be really careful about that because that's where we can get ourselves into some trouble with the public when we say, like, this we thing have is, to do is this. required. And right, right. It was like the unified basketball conversation, right? Which is super uncomfortable. Right, right, and and I think that the growth piece. I mean, luckily, I think we're in a really different place with that. I'm sure we'll talk about that about the joint workshop. I think we're in a place where people are actually recognizing that much more than they were a year ago. Mm -hmm. And you know, but it is a decision point, right? You could say, actually, we're not going to add a teacher here. We're going to have class sizes that are higher, and you know, we might shift things around so that. The second graders have bigger classes than the kindergartners, or however that works. Um, you know, it's it's a decision point and it's a choice. It's not a requirement. Yeah. Um, but I think that we should try to call it out in um, in a clear way that says that it's not really. I, I don't quite have, know how to use the words. It's like it's not a choice. It's it's forced on you to some extent. Mm because your circumstances are changing. So you're being responsive to the circumstances. It's a choice to the extent that you don't have to respond to those circumstances. It's, it's a necessity law. if we want to maintain our values and right. uh, st structure. Of right, you want to be consistent in terms District of the levels. educational experience that that kindergartner is going to get versus the kindergartner who came before or after. Yeah. So it's, it's kind of like that. Okay. Um, so, um, the other piece that we're working on is budget book. Um, we've talked a lot about the monster book and how we really don't want necessarily to have the monster book this year. We want to be more streamlined. We want to be more focused. We want to be more, you know, as much as we enjoy having all this content in there, that is really fun to read and really interesting to us at least. Um, we want to be more targeted on, you know, talking about who are we, what are we doing, and what's the budget ask. 
So tomorrow's leadership council meeting, we have a big chunk of time for folks to work on their sections. We've already talked quite a bit about what we could remove and what we could keep and how it would look different. And um, so that's going to be this this week and, and the following week. And just trying to kind of streamline things and remember who's the audience, um, you know, who, who's going to read it and, you know, hopefully deliver something that helps us at the budget workshop, mm. like an anchor yep. piece that we can use as a resource, but then also might lend itself to pulling out some material to be shared with the public. When will you have those available to the board? The budget books? Yeah. Um, it'd be the week before the workshop. Okay. Um, if I live that long. <laughs> Kate has been doing an incredible job with budget. I, I'm not sure how she um, is sleeping. Um, um, yeah. She goes to sleep because she I have sleep that cold. this quarter. Yeah. You know that? Say, well, tis the season. And it I showed because she was like down for the count. I, had, before, I got so vacation. Sick. I actually week. had she to sleep. It was feeling so physically like ill from all of this. It was terrible. Oh. But you know, that's okay. I'm better now. Right. And we got cookies and you know, <laughs> coffee and stuff. Um, so that that's really kind of where we're at and what's going on. And um, I did have a concern. I brought my note about the um, that you had sent to Kelly about the meeting invites mm -hmm. and where we are on the calendar, where things fit in. So do you want to segue to that? Do you have questions? The only other thing you had mentioned about the budget was the copier fleet replacement. Oh yeah, and that actually is kind of a separate conversation oh, okay. because it's it's really um, it's about the purchasing policy and how we're going to attack the need for replacing some of the copiers. So I'd, I would I would keep that separate. Okay, okay. cool. Um, I did forget to talk about um, some of the assumptions that we're making right now in level services, and this is something that we usually have some kind of a slide about when we do the presentation, um, public and our workshop. You know, when we're when we're digging in deeper, it's you know. What, it, what are your guesses? So big guesses right now are Anthem, which I'm guessing at an increase of 6%, which is an average of recent years. Um, if it's more than that, a percentage point usually runs a couple of hundred thousand dollars, so it's a big chunk. Yep. Um, we're hoping to get some guidance on that from Anthem, at least like the top tier rate in March, but I'm not sure when. Um, so that's a big wonder, yeah. but we face that every yeah. year and yeah. we, we adjust. Um, Delta Dental is a smaller number. I'm doing that at plus 4%. Main PERS doesn't change this year on the teacher group, which is nice. They have a plus 0.1% on the uh, municipal side on the PLD group, which is you know, not hugely um, impactful. And of course, open contracts right teachers and then starting negotiations for the support staff which if you look at those two bargaining units that's like all of our First staff yeah. you know, the rest of us are just a little sliver a little mm -hmm. piece, a little piece. Yeah. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how we make out this week is there still a negotiated negotiations Wednesday, meeting yeah. on Wednesday yep. yeah, I'm excited to hear how that turns out um, and then the last piece that's out there is we actually did get subsidy yep. information, which was really exciting. Um, I have a copy of the preliminary ED279. Um, and if the legislature supports the governor's budget proposal, um, we could be looking at seven hundred and almost $760,000 more in subsidy this year. More? More mm -hmm. than wow. the current year. More than what we got. Yeah. Um, and six it, something last year, is that right? Um, we had an increase of, yeah, close to 600000 last year. So what's happened is that we've bottomed out on losing subsidy two years ago. Right. And as we've become minimum receivers, now we fall under the statute that says that we get, um, we get our subsidy based on our special education costs from the prior year. Mm -hmm. And of course, our special education costs continue to go up. Mm -hmm. And the portion of the special education costs that are being funded by the state, that statute has also increased a little bit too. So it's 40% in 
year one, we were minimum receivers and it went to 45. This year, it's supposed to go to 50% of those costs. Um, so, I mean, in a sense, we're in a really nice position because we're not going to spend any less on special education costs. Right. Mm -hmm. And if that's the way that our subsidy is going to be calculated, um, then we're going to continue to grow that until we, if we ever do, climb out of minimum receiver status. And it's, it's all about how we, um, as a community, look compared with other communities in the state of Maine. It's not so much about your sort of um, static status, but whether you increase in enrollment, whether you decrease in enrollment, whether you increase in your taxable valuation or decrease in your taxable valuation. And, um, uh, you know, Scarborough looks good compared with our neighbors, and we'll probably continue to do so as long as the economy stays the way that it is. So that's, that's a lot. That's a big data dump. So it, do people have thoughts or questions or? That's good news. I saw that floating around. I had heard that it was floating around on social media. Social today. media. So. Yeah. You said 760, right? Not 750? 759,855 dollars. And of course, it does need to pass the legislature and actually become the budget. So mm. talk to your legislators. So yeah, go out and tell your legislators that you, the budget. you want to support the governor's budget and you want to increase funding to education. Mm -hmm. Yay. Um, okay, cool. I think um, it would be and one of the other nice things about being a minimum receiver is that it's, it's kind of unlikely that hours would change unless something changed really radically at the state level, simply because we aren't getting um, our allocation based on what everybody else is getting. We're getting it based on that statute. So they can't really go lower right. um, if things should change in Augusta. So that's kind of nice, too. Cool. Um, just you want to look at the schedule real quick? While we're talking budget, I think that's a great idea. So, do you guys have, if you guys don't have it in front of you, let me just send it to you real quick. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, that'd be great. I've got a lot of tabs. Yeah, it's if we or if you're in the finance committee folder, it is in there. So, what we've been kind of building up to is, as a leadership team, is is those workshop days on the twenty fourth and twenty fifth. Um, and the idea behind that is to allow us to get um, get that material into your hands and have it explained to you and, you know, have that opportunity for the give and take mm -hmm. and the questions and answers prior to first reading and then have our first reading be prior to the town council's first right. reading. So we're presenting them with a budget that they can then vote on the following week. Okay. So that was our original goal, was to try to kind of push the process up a little bit more. We ended up pushing it not as far as we mm -hmm. would have liked, mm -hmm. but actually that's keeping me from going crazy. So yeah. I'm, I'm not unhappy about that. Okay. So right now we have um, the meetings booked this March 16th, 30th, and April 6th. If we did the 16th, what would we do with it? Yeah, I mean, I guess we could have a preview of the budget book, maybe, but I don't know that we, what you guys want or feel like you need that. Um, it would be nice to see a copy of the investment proposal. Right. Yeah. I feel like we did talk, we spent a lot of time talking about that last we year. We tackled that in a pretty good way, I think, mm -hmm. because I think our sort of basis for conversation was, okay, well, we get level services and we're going to spend time talking with the leadership team about what's in there and why it's in there. And, you know, we, we feel very, fairly confident with that, so let's talk about the new stuff and let's talk about where that, you know, how we feel about that yeah. and, and how we're going to advocate for it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, I would say at that point, if we want to keep the 16th out there, that might be a way that we could spend some time. 
Okay. Um, alternatively, we could just say, you know, keep take the 16th out and keep the 30th, at which point you've got everything in your hands and we could really do a deeper dive. Mm -hmm. Did you say the 17th? 16th. Just 16th. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the 16th and 30th. Yeah. Thank you. My personal preference would be to have that information in advance of the workshop so that we can ask questions to you guys in advance that other people might ask. You can be prepared for them. Yep. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. And, and part of our focus is, is trying to be more um, better at articulating the new stuff. Yeah. You know, and, and talking about it. Because it's funny, when we were looking at the budget book from last year, we were taken aback a little bit by like, okay, here's the story of the school, here's the introduction, here's the facts, here's all the cool things that are going on, here's all the stuff, and then there's this little box that says, and our budget proposal is, right. yeah. you know, I want a new teacher. Yeah. Right. And it doesn't, you know, why is there not more going on in that little box? And so that was one of the things that our team brought up and said, well, really shouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, if this is the, the big ask yeah. that's new and different, shouldn't we be spending a little more time? So that ties into what you're saying. And it's showcasing our schools and our departments, something that happens somewhere different. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Like that's, that's not been, to say that's, that's not a good a thing. Struggle, it's a great right? thing. Yeah. Right? Well, because it's, like, it's the pendulum, it? right? Like we, I think that the budget book has kind of been developed slowly over the last few years in a response to people saying that tell we, me more, tell we me needed more. more. We had to have yeah. more. Like what, you know, and then it wasn't enough to just put out spreadsheets because then people would want, you know, context, con you know, then, then nothing made sense without any context. So then mm -hmm. it was like, well, let's write a paragraph and give it some context. And yeah. then it was, well, if they have a paragraph, then this should have a paragraph. Exactly. And now we have this big, beautiful budget book, which is, it, it's so much monster. work, right? you know, okay. and Somebody really the audience is to just find out about the budget. It's right. like, Get, right. get me to Could the get to the point. Yes. Where is that page? Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, and I think the town went through that same sort same. of arc, yep. right? I would, of, I would agree with that. Um, you know, back in the good old days, I'd say, here's your spreadsheet. Right. You know, mm -hmm. here's your GL accounts. Here's what we had last year. Here's what we want this year. Right. And maybe there'd be a few extra little columns in there. Right. But, you know, that, I, I would never really go back to that because I feel like it's, I feel like that is the same thing as me giving the public a financial report and not putting my little story in right? mm -hmm. because how do you know how to read the financials how do you know if this is good bad or indifferent if you don't live in it right. um, but there has to be a little happy medium sure there, I can right? appreciate that so we have a goal I mean it. we're That's great the, the team is is trying to get everything from you know some of the departments and and sections in the book have like 10 pages 12 pages what if we had three or four pages is what we're saying is, you know, mm -hmm. not to take all the content out, but let's squish it up a little bit. Yeah. And maybe only half the really cute pictures of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So keep the 16th. Um, I don't know. So on the first, we have the town manager and superintendent present <clears throat> town budget to town council. Right. But that's really just Sandy and Sandy Tom. and Tom. So right. there shouldn't be much that we need to do other than maybe like if Sandy wants to like run it by us. I don't remember how really we did that last year. Just it's sat. Really, I mean, it just kind of sat there. Yeah, know. I think it's just. Well, in, in the past year, what we had done was um, we had had the budget workshop that same day, like the yep. day before in that same day. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we were all coming out of it going, oh, wow, we're completely immersed in school budget. Yeah. And then we sat through this sort of public reveal, and I think you guys probably felt a little bit grounded in our part of it, at least, just yeah. through going through the way that it timed out. Um, so in this case, you'll actually have that a week before yeah. you get to that point. Okay. So this is going to I don't necessarily see an immediate, a need right now for the meeting on the 30th. I think we had originally had that in because we had moved things up. So we can right. cancel that or we can just leave it in if you guys want and cancel it as we get closer if we don't need it. Um, I mean, I don't have I don't have a problem leaving it in if something were to come up or come out of the two-day workshops that we wanted to discuss as a committee before it gets presented to the school board. Okay. I don't anticipate that happening, and I think 
that there's probably a high likelihood that having the full board in those two two day workshops and then you know, everyone's going to feel ready to have it presented at, yeah. at our public meeting. But I don't mind keeping it in there as a placeholder, even if we label it as that right now and make that call later on. Yeah, I, I would Easier agree. To like, keep it as needed. That's the thing. I, I might even just leave right? it in my <laughs> Really even difficult if you to add things once want. you take them away because <laughs> something else you never goes get away. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, cool. And then the other one was, um, I mean, to, when else would we, that, April 6th was the other one. But I don't know if, again, like, I think we had sometime between we wanted to the book it between. second and the first reading and the second reading yep. for us, basically. Um, we wanted to get something on the calendar and just say, look, <coughs> we want to be able to sit as a team and help process through any questions or concerns so that we know when we get to second reading that everybody's kind of satisfied with what the product is. But now that I'm looking at it, I think what we should do is move it to after the town council first reading and before our second reading. Cause when is town council in. first reading? The first. The, the April. Eighth. Isn't it? No. The uh, it's a week April. later. Oh, okay. They separate that presentation from their first reading. Okay. Uh, because for the same kind of reason that we did right. the way that we did it was they wanted to have time to have the presentation, get the stuff, right. process through it, and then do first reading. So they'll see it on the first, but then they But won't they'll vote on it a week later. So we have a special meeting? Yep. Okay. So between the 8th? Yeah, I just don't have that. So between May the 7th? Eight, between the 8th and the 7th of May. May? Yeah. Yeah, May. The, we have the... Um, There's the public hearing. At the board meeting on the 16th of April, we've got the public hearing. Do we want to do something that's sort of responsive to that? <clears throat> Is that right? I'm looking yeah, at your yeah. email. I don't have the. No, it is. Calendar. It's on April 16th. Is the school board meeting that is the public hearing? It really. I mean, the the working sessions could be almost any time between our first reading and our second reading. Just mm -hmm. making sure that we have confidence that the product that's going to second reading is is what we all want it to be. Mm -hmm. What about like the 28th, Monday, the 28th of April? So are we taking the six out? I don't think we need it. Okay. Do you, Kate? April six is what we have now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's early, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think um, particularly if we're waiting for some of these unconfirmed numbers to come in, nothing will have changed. The from closer that we get to the second reading, the more likely we are to have yeah. good numbers on a lot of things. Yeah. That makes sense. So, Sarah, what was the day you said? Uh, um, the day I propose is, Mon is, if we want to stick with Monday, is the 27th of April. April Because our second reading is the Thursday after that. Or we could do the May 4th, Monday, May 4th. I'd vote and for the 27th. And we can make Star Wars jokes. I made the 4th be with you. <laughs> okay. I'm ready. <laughs> I'd, I'd vote for the 27th, um, just assuming... You know, please, universe, that we have good data at that point. Okay. And then that gives us a little time to do some wiggles and tweaks before that second reading if we if we want to create something that's a little different. What time is that? What time works for you guys? 5.30? Is that tough for you? No. Cool. 5.30? Thanks. Tell us. I can ask Kelly to cancel the 6th and to add this 27th in tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then the other thing, I know I had a text chain with Leanne about this. I can look afterwards. But we wanted to make sure town council was invited. And Leanne and I had a debate on who should invite them because they well, had, like, very... Yeah, they're more, much more appropriate protocol than yeah. I think we do. And we had talked um, about me sending, forwarding them the invite, but yeah. then I got snarled up with Kelly about where the workshop was going to be on the second day. So we don't have that so yet. So we don't really have that okay. yet. Um, I mean, I suppose, I, I hate to say this, but we could go back and look at that day on March 25th. That's a Wednesday. And see if we could change the day up and find the venue by changing the day. But don't all the staff doesn't all staff already have that in their calendar yeah they got it. 
So it's a question of, you know, what's more important. There has to be some space in this town to have a meeting. Isn't that an interesting <laughs> thing? <laughs> like, I was just thinking about that today. It's like, wow, you know, maybe there meeting. is something about growth and scope. We have the, the workshop in Learning Commons, maybe? That's, we already tried that. Mm. And I was surprised because I thought the hard one was going to be the school day one, the one yeah. that's in the morning. Yeah. Um, but Chambers was open right. in the morning. Have, have and then I think Wednesday night is probably, you know, some every Wednesday kind of meeting. Right. What about um, the room that we had the workshop in last week? Multi-purpose room? Multi-purpose room. At the high school? I'm sure Kelly's She's probably checked out. Looked yeah, yeah. at whatever there is, um, but I know she also wants to talk to you about it. Okay. Tell you what's going on, so. Well, either way, I'll make sure that they get the invite, whether it comes from me, you as the liaison, or Leanne. Because I wanted to come with a message and not sure. just like a forward. Sure. Cool. Okay. I think procedurally it should probably come from Leanne, but okay. it doesn't. Because we would like, if we can, to have the whole council. There are as many right. people who can come because it just, it's such a great opportunity, you guys know, yeah. mm -hmm. to just kind of fast forward your understanding of, yeah. of what's in the proposal and just answer so many questions. I think it's valuable. Cool. That's it on the budget calendar. Do you guys have any questions? Nope. Uh, awesome. Ready to be in my... Awesome. Um, Kate, copier fleet discussion? Copier fleet discussion. Okay. So I have a little fact sheet here that I wanted to hand out. Um, and as I'm doing this, I will give you the, the five-second version of, of the question slash problem slash decision point. Thank you. Thank so you. our bidding policy, purchasing policy, says that we will bid out anything that's over, a purchase that's over $20,000. And then it has a lot of um, other bits and pieces to it. But um, historically, we have always purchased copiers on a lease purchase agreement as an entire fleet. And in my experience, we've done five-year leases, and at the end of the five years, all your machines are dead, and you go out and you get a whole bunch of new machines. The last time we did this was in the spring of 2017, and we went out and did our RFP process. We went through the usual um, rigmarole, which is to accept bids. We had six vendors, I think, who bid. Um, you know, we went through a, a very rigorous and analytical, uh, <laughs> analytical review of the bids, um, and ultimately we selected Business Equipment Unlimited, known as BEU, um, and Konica Minolta machines. We bought 39 machines, and at the, um, I say probably something like suggestion or recommendation in my notes, but it was really at the insistence of the IT director at the time, Jen Lim. We really can't have a five-year lease, she said. Copiers are now pieces of tech equipment. We're going to use them for centralized printing. We're going to use them for scanning. We're going to use them for email. We need these tech devices to not have a five-year lifespan because they're going to be useless to us. They're going to be big doorstops at the end. So we worked really hard to come up with pricing so that we could afford a three-year lease. Okay. At the time, we also said, well, you know, if we do this, then maybe when the lease is up, we might not have to replace 100% of the fleet. It was sort of a side comment, oh, by the way. Well, so this year, the lease is done. We made our last payment in, in August. The three years are up. And so I started out talking with IT about my usual, let's do an RFP and let's get the process started and get ready to replace these machines. Um, we sat down with BEU twice. We went through um, service data and um, the number of paper counts, and I'm not gonna use the right words, but um, basically the usage that the machines had had. Um, and long story short, most of the machines have a ton of useful life left. Because of that short lease term, they're not dead. They're in really great shape. Um, I have a recommendation from BEU based on service records and based on the volume that the machines have done and what their expected lifespan is to replace 14 of them. 
to replace 14 machines out of a fleet of 39 across the district means that you're going to have a mixture of old and new machines. I like the idea. I'm not going to go out and replace a machine that doesn't need to be replaced yet. I think it's it's smart and, you know, talking with Don in IT, um, this is really the way that we should be doing this. We should be on a multi-year replacement cycle just mm -hmm. like we do with other tech sure. equipment, right? So my quandary and my, my dilemma is um, if I do I go through a bid process? Because replacing 14 machines is gonna cost us somewhere around $75,000. So technically it would fall under the purchase agreement policy um, by, you know, by dollar value. Um, but if I go through a bid process and I have a price come in from a different vendor for 14 machines, Will that vendor be able to provide Konica Minolta machines, which is what we want, because that's what we have in our fleet now, and we like them and they work well with our systems. Um, if they're able to provide Konica Minolta machines uh, and at a lower price, then do we have two different vendors, and when you go to this copier, there's going to be a tag on it that says, call Smith Office Products, and there's a copier over here that has a different tag on it that says, call BEU. You have a bunch of different service reps crisscrossing one another. And I mean, from a, from a business efficiency standpoint, mm -hmm. it could get a little wonky. Sure. Um, so again, talking with IT, they're like, well, really what you need to do is you need to get BEU to give you a good price and just let them replace a portion of the fleet. So I asked them what that would look like. Um, and you'll see in my notes, I, this basically describes like the, the background to all of this, um, but what we asked them to do was, if you were going, if you were going to sell us fourteen machines, what would that look like? And they pointed out, first of all, that they um, are the winning bid on a national government contract. So their, you know, their theory or argument was that you know they've already been through a bid process and that it's been vetted by this national purchasing consortium for public entities. Okay, that's nice. Um, the second thing was that they said because of that national purchasing contract, they would be able to give us the same prices that we paid in August of 2017, which is kind of nice. Um, and they would be able to continue the service contract for the entire fleet at the same price that we're currently paying without any increases. It's a nice deal. Um, it's, uh, I think, a reasonable deal, and I think the pricing is very good. I think it's very competitive, but I still have that wonder about, you know, the process, and is this something where we would set aside the bidding policy and say, no, this is a different way of doing things, and, you know, this is, what, this is how we want to approach it. And I don't expect this team to say yay or nay to that tonight, but I want to put it out there. Um, Sandy and I have talked about it a little bit. I think it's the first Diane and I have had a chance to say anything about it. Um, but I, I find myself in a bit of a dilemma. And um, I know that the, the copier business, the copy office products business, is very competitive. I have a ton of vendors who would really love to have our business. If we um, opened it up to bid, would they go with this? particular configuration as their bid? Um, I think what we would do, and I, again, I haven't really sort of parsed this all the way out because I'm, I'm stuck in the process, but I think what we would do is we would put out an RFP for 14 copiers because mm -hmm. that's all we need. Right. Can you say 14 Konica Minolta, like the same brand? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So that would I can't. prevent people who don't have that. From exactly. Well. And I know that in at the time, in 2017, I don't know if this is still true, BEU was the only um, vendor mm -hmm. that had the contract with Con Konica Minolta to right. provide those machines. There may be more than one in New England that might bid. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to go through a bid process just because either. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't want to just say, well, yeah, we're putting it out to bid, but we're only going to, we only want Konica Minolta product. But the, and uh, I just pulled up the policy and, and it says that you can forego the, well, that you can do a competitive bidding or an RFP and that you can forego both of those if um, 
the superintendent basically has good cause to make that determination. That is absolutely true. It says that you don't have to bid if there's a compelling reason not to. And so my question is, does this rise to the level of right. a compelling reason? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I, I feel like it does. I mean, I feel like it's good business practice, but I also don't want to just sort of say, oh, yeah, this is, this is what we're going to do. What, what if you had to say, um, sort of justify your position that it's a, a compelling reason, what, what would your argument be? Um, I think it would be based on the fact that you don't want your fleet to be a bunch of different machines. You want, for the sake of the IT team and the networking and the end users, you want them all to be the same. With the same service vendor. Um, and right. the service vendor is really important because if I am a beleaguered secretary at Wentworth School <laughs> and somebody says, the copier is jammed, well, which I don't is really want to have Let's to think about which vendor to call um, or you know whether the toner for this vendor comes on Tuesdays, but the toner for that vendor comes on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. and so there's a business efficiency piece. Um, I also found it you know quite pleasant that BEU is willing to honor those prices because they could very easily bump those mm -hmm. um, at the beginning of a new complete contract. Let me let me ask you this question. I, I agree with you, but um, I'm, <clears throat> once you enter, to, enter into sort of this staggered lease to buy program. Then you're kind of stuck with it, You're right? always stuck with the same vendor, right? Right. If, Unless, if that's your rationale for... Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the wonder, you know? Right. It's like, well, so that if, be, if we say this is the right argument to replace 14 copiers this year, and then next year it's going to be 10 copiers, we'll, we'll just keep doing the same thing, and BEU is our vendor forever. Um, and I'm not sure that that's necessarily true, but it is the way that you would, mm -hmm. you know, the way that you would think if you're doing bits and pieces. Um, you would have to then make a, a strategic decision to have a wholesale change because there was a better product out there and another vendor was available. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's kick, kicked me out of my normal way of thinking of this. And so I'm really processing it with you guys. I'm just sort of trying to figure out what makes sense. And um, Don Bajan is going, well, yeah, you know, this makes sense. This, if you were in, a, in corporate land, you'd do this and... It's just it just makes sense. I mean, if we go to bid though, and we say conical multi, because I buy the argument as to like wanting to keep them all the same, that mm -hmm. makes sense to me. But we can we can control for that by putting that in the RFP. Is there a chance that another vendor comes back and is significantly cheaper? Or does it seem like this is like a really good rate because they're based off prices from three years ago? I don't know for a fact that it's a really good rate. I could do some research on that and find out. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I can't really correct for the variable of a vendor really wanting to get your business and like mm. cutting price to get in the door. Um, but I also, I, I do need to find out. Um, Especially at this lower number of machines, mm. right? right. Yeah. There might not be enough in it for them to make it worth their right. while. I, but I do want to know, if, are there other preferred vendors or whatever they call mm -hmm. it? Um, and what are the costs associated with putting it out to bid or for an RFP? My time. IT's time. You don't have to do a, a publication? Or yeah, we, we would put a um, notice in the paper, but I mean, that's... It's not like a $1,000? Um I don't think we could, we would need to spend a thousand dollars, but you know, th you're right. There would be a right. little bit of an advertising cost. We'd post it on our website. We actually, what I would end up doing is sending it out to the vendors that I already know about because they're all calling me <laughs> right. every fifteen minutes. Right. 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 When are you going out to bid? I've right. got all their business cards. I've met all their brothers and their cousins, <laughs> and you know, one know all their dogs' names. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't take no good dining. I take cookies. <laughs> take cookies. Yeah. Only Girl Scout cookies. Yeah. How long are they willing to hold? the pricing and service contract for? Um, the pricing they would they would hold for us, they would honor for us if we made the purchase coming up in the summer. So for this next, just one For this set. next year, yeah. 
Um, I didn't talk to them about what it would look like in ensuing years. Um, they did say, and you know, again, we were going through this big spreadsheet of all the machines and their um, their lifespans and um, what kind of work they've been put through. They did say that this year would probably be the most costly because we'd be replacing the biggest, highest volume machines. Mm -hmm. And then you'd have two years where it would probably be a little bit less because you'd be taking older machines, but they're the, the less mm -hmm. high volume right. ones. But then you'd probably have a bump up again three years ahead. So it's, it, it is a def, definitely a different way of looking at how to do it. The other piece that we could, um, that we could do is to save a little bit of money on financing because with the lease purchase agreement, I think I said it was $145,000 uh, three years ago. We did finance that through Gorham Leasing and then we paid like 2.5% APR. Um, if we were doing it piecemeal, um, we could look at putting it into our operating budget mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. say, you know, this is an annual cost. It's not going to go up and down. And, um, instead of making a lease payment and paying interest, we could probably afford to buy them outright. The, are the Konica machines still the the most desirable machines? They really the are the top are. of the line, yeah, according to our IT friends, um, as far as for educational use. So if you don't think that the cost is significant to bid or to submit an RFP, and we can draft it so that it it limits the the results to only those machines that we want. Is there a downside to putting it out for bidding to to see? Um, the only downside would be that a lower price comes in and we end up splitting the service contract. I think. Um, oh, to purchase it, and then the service contract could be more <coughs> or would that the service well contract, okay so right now if we're thinking if we're thinking outside vendors. of the box would BEU continue to be our service contract for machines that they didn't sell to us I don't think so oh, right I'd be shocked if they did that yeah, I don't think so right. we do have a managed print program with them for the little printers which they didn't necessarily sell to us mm -hmm. some of them are old some of them are new and that would be a two-year dilemma we would be in right, right. yeah I mean, I, I don't know enough about, I mean, I don't know enough about where the printers are or how many there are in each building, like what it would be. The 39 I mean, if there a way, right. well, is there a way to, is there a way to be strategic about where the current oh, yeah. printers are of so that we have right. one provider who goes to the high school, but then we put our yeah. other mm -hmm. different, you know what I'm saying? Like I, I do. That, I can say all kinds of right, suggestions that are not like, valuable. You know, like there are, they're all at different levels. Some know, larger machines, machines yeah. in every building. Sure. Exactly. So we get pink and blue machines. <laughs> get them in colors. <laughs> Color coded. We could put stickers on them. No, they are right. scattered. Okay. So every building was oh, There's no way to say, <laughs> okay, we would not service <laughs> all the Pleasant Hill on right. this new contract. Yeah. Well, well I mean, I, your, your, be your awesome. argument's a good argument. I mean, and I'm not saying it's your argument or that you right. Right. you know. As we but, talk this but, through. But the rationale, points to ponder, the right? rationale makes sense to me, except for the fact that when I think, like, well, then we'll always be in that mm. position. And we right. At what point do we go out and look and see if there's a better price right. out there? Right. Because or... then you'd have to do, like, an entire change all at once, even for some machines that, that weren't were necessarily new. needing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Well, well, and, and the other piece down the road is you know, like if we it's stay future. Like, yeah, if yeah, copier future, technology right. should suddenly morph into something completely different, then right. you know we'd be thinking about doing a wholesale change like that. Right. If we go out for RMP, do we have to? We have to ex legally have to accept that lowest. No, offer? we we have to accept our policy is to accept the best bid, not the low bid, including the offer that they gave us here that mm -hmm. was right. Awesome. Right. So I see, I mean, I know it's your time, but to me it seems like the right thing to do is to go out to process, and if it's significantly lower, that to me might make up for the, the inefficiencies that we see on the service side. If it's not significantly lower. Well, plus it's our policy to do it. But that's, that's kind of that's my opinion. It's point of opinion. I don't know that this necessarily needs to go to vote or anything, but that's just my opinion. Well, yeah, I think the the way the policy mm -hmm. describes it is like the superintendent brings to you a a reason why mm -hmm. he wants to go outside yeah. the normal process. 
Um, so I'll talk with Dawn about it a little bit more. I do want to find out, like, if we say Hanukkah Minolta machines, does that mean there's, you know, five people who could bid, or is it one person, or is it yeah. two? Right. Or yeah. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. is, what does that do to the parameters of the bid process? Right. Um, because if there are only a couple of vendors, then you only have to look at a couple of proposals, and you only have to rate them. And it is, it is a time commitment. I mean, you really have to set aside a couple of full days to go through bids like that. Yeah. But if there's only a couple of them, it would, it would be easier. So I'll find out a little bit more information, and then I'll bring that info back to you guys, and we can figure out what to do. And we don't have to do it today. So, mm -hmm. But I wanted to get it out there so we could be thinking about yeah. it. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay. The things we think of. <laughs> Two other things. Uh, joint workshop discussion. So Leanne made a formal request for the action to be taken by town council on the impact fees of their next meeting next week. Um, she asked if Kate would be there as well as a member of the finance committee. I cannot be there. I'll be out of town. Um, if one of you are able to be there, that would be great. If you that can't, email. then I'll let I Leanne know and maybe like Nick from it. Long Ridge Planning can be there. It's, um, it's their regular it's meeting, their regular so it would be 7 p.m. Wednesday night meeting. I'm going to go ahead and put it on my calendar. For the 4th. March 4th. Oh, I'm sorry, the 5th. No, we're the 5th. March 4th. Yes, I was Wednesday. looking at February. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the 4th. I don't see any reason why I can't be there. Is there an expectation that we would be doing any further... Um, presentation no so it's just an action item for them they heard all about it they vote up or down and we're just there Basically in the just audience to in be case helpful. there's questions yeah because um, I thought my last presentation was pretty good with my squawky voice <laughs> like, ah, ah, ah. yeah it, uh, maybe we would just need to provide them with any previous documentation that we've already shared. Right. But they could add that to, into their yeah, I, can, I have that, so I can email stuff. that to them. So, Kate, you're okay with that? Yeah, I'm just okay. putting it on my calendar right cool. now. Um, yeah, March 4th at awesome. 7. I will let Leanne know. Otherwise, I don't You're my partner. Thing you sure. want to talk about? You're the liaison. I'm the liaison anyway. I try to go anyway, so mm -hmm. that's, that's fine. Are you happy with how the joint, joint workshop went? Cool. You should just move on to the next topic. No! <laughs> oh, I can't wait to hear what you guys think about it. I thought it was kind of fun watching Sarah try to get people to actually agree that there was some consensus in the room about something. <laughs> I thought that both of the presenters really did provide very important information for everyone to have. Like, I felt like I even... You know, I, like, I knew really a lot about the enrollment mm -hmm. side of things, but I felt like I learned a lot about the town side of things From in Jay's terms of permitting and, yeah. and that yes. type of thing. So yeah. I felt really like helpful. it was really useful. And it seemed to me that Jay and Rebecca had had a really productive conversation. Yes, mm -hmm. they had met that, together that prior to. When they came, mm -hmm. they had both agreed on a, on mm -hmm. a set of standards. Yeah, yeah. they were on the same yeah. page. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Should that be coming up? And I think it was, it was nice for that group to hear the level of professionalism of both Jay and Rebecca and their, you know, their <clears throat> deep understanding of this stuff and ability to articulate what's going on, I think was really impressive. Yeah, right. that was and super impressive. Yeah, it provides the opportunity to have more informed conversation, right, mm -hmm. versus yeah. operating on right. everyone's perceptions mm -hmm. right. and what they think may or may not yes. be happening. Right. Mm -hmm. I also thought it was interesting the, the piece about the um, f fractionalized permits, mm -hmm. yeah, if I'm using the right just expression, like that intriguing one to me. permit yeah. could actually be only a portion of a permit right. if it was a, a permit, small building. Two -thirds yeah. permit. Yeah. And it, I felt like there were a lot of little light bulbs on the council going off of, oh, really? Does mm -hmm. that make sense yeah, in today's that. world? Mm -hmm. Because we're, we've all been talking about, you know, moving into a tiny house and right. living on a boat. And what was it? You know? Uh, yeah. So who's to say that I can't put five people in my tiny little house right. and then impact town services? Right. I'm a, I'm a little... 
I'm sure you guys are too. Like I left a little worried that we didn't get to a complete unanimous agreement as to what our single source of truth was when it came to enrollment data. And so I wonder if that's something for like a joint communications. Because I read the leader in the article kind of referenced that as the enrollment study as like the study, the study <laughs> which it should, right? Right. Um, because what well, else it's is our there? opinion that yeah. it should, I guess. Right. But so I'm wondering if that's maybe something to be picked up by the community. If you guys are having joint meetings, I, what I heard was that there there were opinions that we didn't need to have collaboration on that. Right. That that was that was my interpretation of what some individuals were saying. Mm. But the other thing is, I feel like that old, it was only coming from one person, right? Yeah. There was other. And some people didn't express a strong opinion. I thought I I thought I heard it from maybe more than. Did you? Yeah. And and at that point, the discussion, to me, didn't make much sense in tr terms of collaborating if if other, if people didn't see a value in that. Yeah. In in coming to a an agreed upon set of data points. I, I just don't know how we solve for it, right? Because at the end of the day, it's a PR, it's a it's a it's a communication and sort of how we get information out, right? Like, we're, especially during the budget process, like, we're going to be talking about, like you just said, like, our little enrollment bucket, right? right. And that's going yeah. to be based off of this study. Exactly. Well, we're going to use that. But so I, I think that, that what that. I heard was we can't preclude anybody independently from using yeah. their own yeah. data points. That that's what they chose to use. So I guess I the, so. the question is, do they mean that they want to use their own data sets of whatever kind they are to inform their own deliberations about the town budget as a whole, or are they thinking in terms of refuting what the school department has to say? I think that both have occurred. Mm. I tend to think it's the former, that various pieces of information, I mean, it. I'm going to play devil's advocate, but not really. Like, there, there are different ways to weigh the data. And so I think that there are town councillors who expressed an interest in wanting to give weight to certain portions of it over other portions. For example, you know, using various models. Like, well, Rebecca gave us six different models that we could look at. And, you know, this idea that we would one. we that we would use one blah 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 and so like giving more weight to that versus looking at the study as a whole sure. is is really just a difference of interpretation of mm -hmm. something that's available and we've all agreed on except if your numbers are different and then you go out to inform I agree the that's totally different to inform which has happened to inform mm -hmm. the community and and support your analysis then that creates a real troubling dynamic I, I agree. I agree, that should not be happening. I think, I guess it just, you make a good point, right? I think it's just our duty to everything that we talk about when it comes to the budget and this to just source it. And like this is being built off of what we're we basing to our, as our single source of truth. Right. Which is available for anyone to be able to download and read and come to their conclusions about. Right, and I think there was a lot of comment about what does it mean for a data projection to be yes, accurate exactly. or true yes. or come true yes. or, you know, what does that really mean? Well, what it really means is from a practical standpoint, we're seeing the numbers play out according to the projections that we have. And therefore, we feel it's reasonable to assume that those projections will continue to be more or less on and target. If, and if, it like a fair right. and if and their people <laughs> don't fundamentally buy into that, right. then there's right. but then that's where it. we have to say we don't that and that's I said this during the workshop and I didn't mean to sound like we don't have to agree because we are absolutely agreeing that Rebecca's study is the only enrollment study that right. we are using. But if you literally aren't someone who thinks that this is something that can be projected and you don't put any weight in projections, then that's your prerogative. Well, it's the only right. enrollment study. Right. <laughs> right. True. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm going to start saying, cite your source. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk around with like a placard with footnotes on it. Right. Give that to me uh, in AP standards. Circle back. Um, <laughs> 
communications. Schedule. They town council offered a joint communications committee meeting for next Monday, um, but neither Hillary nor Kristen were able to attend. So I'm going to go and just sit there um, and make sure that if there are voices that need to come from the school board side that they at least have our you perspective, your but it's not technically a joint meeting okay. because we couldn't get enough people gotcha. to go. Um, I will report back at the full board meeting how it goes. Okay, cool. I was wondering about the last item on the agenda that we didn't get to, which was let's all get back together and talk about prioritizing yeah, capital projects. Yeah, we didn't get to that. And it's that, the elephant in the room. That well, we it's, a, it's a pretty big, <laughs> yeah. big animal, whether it's an elephant or you know, it depends on which end of it you grab, right? Mm -hmm. Like the old story. Um, sure, I'm familiar, but you don't know that one. Like a, another day, the blind man. <laughs> the, he gets the trunk and he says, "Oh, it's oh. a snake." And then the other one gets a foot and he says, "Oh, it's a tree." It's a <laughs> I'll, I'll try and get a good version of it for you with some pictures yeah, for next time. <laughs> All right, blind man and el blind right. men and Be the careful. elephant. Yeah, <laughs> not on my not on my right. school board. Yeah, right. that's tough to <laughs> um, um, So we didn't really. Yeah, any place with that, right? So no. in conversations as liaison, um, there's there's a real uh, struggle, I think, from everybody that I've spoken with, both on our board and their council, that nobody can really wrap their head around what that would look like. You know, what I, I made a joke now several times, like, spoiler alert, our priority is the school. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> right. have a workshop so, where yeah, the school board comes and, 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 and tells you unless that. town council wants a proposal from the community <laughs> center, the library, the turf, the school, all at once. But then what does that even look like? Do they sit and we all present to them? Like, ultimately, it's mm. their decision. And so, I, I mean, I would love for them to make some movement and express their priorities, but I don't know what that looks like. So the problem, the problem with that, as I see it, is that I hear their argument being, well, we haven't, at times, we haven't heard from the school board about the schools. And, and like, well, we've invited you to our meetings, and we've asked you to come to our table. And, and so if their mm -hmm. rationale for the reason why the other capital improvements are moving to the top of the list is because those people are coming to them, then even if they know that it's our priority, then there might be value. If that's, Being more direct. If that's what it takes for them to mm -hmm. want right. to recognize it as a as a Right. Ask. How do we get recognized so that, well, that we're a, given equal consideration? A, a super simple question is if it has to be on your five-year capital plan, where does a new school go on our five-year capital plan? Mm -hmm. We put it up there the same way that the libraries had it on there. Or can we be put on it? I mean, yeah. Well, we have a capital budget, and our capital budget has a five-year um, span to it every year. It's just a spreadsheet that says, you know, this year we're doing some roofing on the high school, and next year we're doing some roofing on the middle school. So we can we say to... next year we're going to build the school. We can put a placeholder in there, Let's and then it. it's and then it's there. Yeah, um, I have no idea what amount we'd put out there, or if it would you know upset people that we put something Probably. on a document. That's the other thing, or, right? Like I don't know. Is mm -hmm. that? But then I have heard people say, well, you know, it's not real because it's not mm -hmm. on your five-year plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could say TBA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we do that in the budget, though? The budget's just a piece of paper. Yeah. I mean, it's a capital project document that we try to be truthful and thoughtful about that says... It doesn't you know, need to have a dollar amount? Um, it would have to have some kind of a dollar amount. It can't be TBA. I don't know. TBD? TBD. I, I, I just wonder sometimes if the more we treat it like it's, it's, it needs to happen, if that's... I don't know. Everybody always says mm -hmm. that's how you make something a reality. Right. Acceptance. Mm -hmm. Acceptance narrative. Yeah. So that's, I mean, this is definitely an ongoing discussion. I hope the other committees are, if you guys are on other committees and this comes up, mm -hmm. I hope that it's being discussed because I don't, I don't, 
I don't want to, I don't want nothing to happen. Because yeah. it was this agenda item and we couldn't get there right. as a group. And maybe with long range planning, I think we have somebody, something on Thursday this week, right? With long range planning, maybe we can bring it up again and just keep talking about it. Yeah. On, on, on that no, I don't think I saw the turf discussion on our agenda for this week. No. Um, I thought it was an executive session yeah. item. Oh, is it? I think so. Oh, but it's sort of couched in it. legalese where it's something about a they were just doing for me. school department property something something. I think it is an executive session item. Yeah, 7.0, motion to enter an executive session for the purpose of discussing the condition of school town property. 6.1, which is a motion to request that they, that they do it. Oh, okay. So there's there a vote on you. requesting oh, I'm missing a lot this week. Oh, yeah, I'm looking at the That's, old. I'm looking at the old. Maybe I only made it to six. I saw that. It's a long, <laughs> it's a long, long agenda. agenda. It is. It is. It is. Okay, My, I missed it. All right, good. I'm glad to see that. Oh, there. Good. Are we to the end of our agenda? We are, sorry, unless you want, you want to discuss the TIF. I do. Item. Okay. Mostly so that Kate knows that this is out there being discussed in the universe and maybe we can look into it and or maybe someone already how knows the answers. But I, I have seen it now a couple of times, this idea, and I'm not going to get the details of this all right, but basically that... The larger our TIF district it becomes, and the more valuable the, the TIF districts in the town become, that the more tax sheltering that can exist, and tax sheltering is a certain percentage of our EPS formula. And so is this something that the school board should take a vested interest in informing town council when they are making decisions about potential investments in their TIF district, either as an incentive to, you know, do this because it would change our EPS formula. Like, I don't, and since it's being talked about in public, I, I don't, I feel like I have, I mean, I have no idea. I don't even know where to start to look okay. to verify so what your, this kind of information. What your assumption is, is that the larger that becomes, the lower our EPS, like the money that we get on the 279 would be? So it's that actually it more. It's, that we yeah. could actually increase okay. our state subsidy okay. by increasing our tax sheltering that's happening okay. in our TIF districts. Yep. And if that is something that's true, I mean, that certainly impacts, mm -hmm. you know, our school budget. And is this something that the we town council and that we have an opinion about and that the town council should be very well read and versed on when mm. they make these kind of decisions because mm. so it could I, have I unintended did, think, or you know very right it should be a thought thoughtful consequence, consequence. Right. exactly um and i i did understand i think what the question is and i did i did a little bit of research and there's a lot of um uh, there's a lot of writing out there about tiff districts or um, segregating some of the value of your town into a TIF district that doesn't create tax value. Um, is that fair when it comes to the actual value of your town versus what's reported um, to the state and used for calculation of subsidy? So two things. One is the EPS formula. People throw that phrase around. Mm. The formula is actually the process by which the state determines what it costs to run education K-12 in your town. Okay. The formula is the first four pages mm -hmm. of this thing. And it includes how many teachers you have, what your student-teacher ratios are, how many guidance counselors you have, what you have for transportation, what you have for operating costs. It's basically the formula is to figure out what it would take to run your schools. It's woefully inadequate and in, you know, insufficient in the real world. But the place where the, the TIF would come in would not be in the formula. It would be in the determination of the district's ability to pay. 
So it's at the end of the formula, they figure out here's how much it should cost to run education in Scarborough, and let's say it's $50 million. And then once that number's been determined, how much is Scarborough going to be able to pay? And the difference is how much you get in subsidy. And so the place where the TIF would come into the um, equation would be not in figuring out the cost of education, but in figuring out the town's ability to pay. And so what I've read, you know, some of this literature is about is a, is a town that's taking advantage of TIF districts really being unfair in terms of what their ability to pay is. Are they leaving tax dollars on the table and then asking the state to give them extra gotcha. money because they don't have those tax dollars to spend on education, to put it in a nutshell? Um, then if you come down to whether towns should be creating TIF districts specifically to make their value yes. look less. Right. You know, then the, you know, is that an immoral thing to do? Mm -hmm. Should you really be paying your share? Should you really be getting, taxing people appropriately for the value of the property that exists in your town and not asking the state to fill in the blanks because you decided not to tax that particular neighborhood or that particular project? Um, so that's like the, the um, conversation that's going on in the, in the uh, web the universe. I didn't find any specific documentation about like how you would actually strategically set out to make yourself look poorer, I guess, you know, <laughs> and therefore leverage the amount of subsidy you get. I think that the thing that's interesting about Scarborough is that right now we're not really getting subsidy based on our right. ability to pay anyway. Right? So if we have a TIF district or we don't, or if we have a lower valuation that we, than we could potentially have, that's not how our subsidy is being calculated in the right. first place. They've already decided that we could afford to pay way more than what we're actually going to pay because they're going to go by the, the minimum receiver statute and give us a little extra. I think if we ever climbed above minimum receiver status, then you'd have a moral quandary. You know, are you are you really underrepresenting yourself in terms of what you have available for tax value? Um, a question I would throw back onto the the people who know these things would be: the state always says they use main revenue services numbers for the valuation of the town. They don't use the town's actual Valuation set by the assessor in Scarborough. Um, Main Revenue Services comes up with a number that they say is Scarborough's taxable value or tax property value. Um, so I don't know if Main Revenue Services takes into account TIFs or not. You know, we might not be collecting taxes on that property, but is it actually included in what Main Revenue Services says we own? Because one of the things that was a big deal for us a couple of years ago was that Main Revenue Services was saying the value of property in Scarborough is, let's say, $3 billion. And I'm not sure I even have the right order of magnitude. But Scarborough was saying, no, actually, you know, our town properties are valued at much less than that. Well, they were valued at much less than that because we hadn't had a revaluation in 10 years. And now that we've had the revaluation, the numbers that we're showing locally and that the assessor is using in Scarborough are much closer to what the state is saying um, that our comparable property values are. So I think the state has a way of um, adjusting for local variances in how you price your, your property. I'm just not sure how that works. We have to ask one of our town councilors who knows these things. Well, it sounds like main revenue services. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. That's very well explained. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. yep, thank you. You're welcome. I'm, I'm glad I could address it. It didn't seem like I was sure I was getting the right question. But I think nope. I, I think I know what's being said. Yeah.
Right. Awesome, guys. Meeting adjourned. Thanks. Thank you. Get that woman a gavel.